Hey, welcome back. So we're gonna cost load a schedule today using expenses in Primavera P6. And um, it's gonna be a longer, it's gonna be a longer tutorial because I wanna show you everything about cost loading our schedule. And so I'll include timestamps down below so you can jump to different areas in the video that might be relevant to you so you can skip around and not have to have to watch the full video front to back. But, but if it's new to you, I would suggest watching it uh, front to back, we'll go over everything that has to do with cost loading a schedule using expenses. So you can see here, this is what the finished product is going to look like. We have a construction value of $3.8 million. All of our construction activities are cost loaded. I'll show you how to find the distribution curve once we've cost loaded the schedule. And that's valuable because you can click on individual months and see how much should be billed if all goes according to plan and uh, in that month in the cumulative value up until that point. We'll progress the schedule so you can, you'll know how to add actual costs once you start getting into your monthly updates. Uh, the other thing I wanna show you is creating cost accounts. So this is particularly useful if you're doing, uh, if you're using the schedule to generate your payment application. Uh, so here we can, we can basically combine um, similar costs, you know, similar scopes of work. Oftentimes in the pay app, you'll see it by bid item. And uh, so in this case, we can see all of our earthwork activities and what they uh, sum up to. So $100,000 for earthwork, $600,000 for our foundations. So, but before we jump in, all I ask in return for making these videos is that you check out our P6 and Microsoft Project Comparison tool on our website, which is linked below. We believe it is the best and cheapest way to instantly view the changes between two schedule files. The first 10 days are free and it's $10 per month thereafter and you can cancel at any time. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so the first thing that we're actually gonna do is uh, we're gonna assign an expense to just one of our activities. So I'm gonna choose the earthwork here and you go to the expenses tab and we can create a new expense. In our expenses, we're just gonna call them um, just a general cost expense. And I'm not gonna do any cost account right now. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna load an arbitrary value of $1 <clears throat> into there. And you'll see why, because I'm gonna, uh, it, it's really difficult to, to assign, um, uh, assign expenses to all of the activities at once. You know, if, if you're doing it the hard way, you have to go through each individual activity, click it, add, add an expense, and there's really not a fast way inside P6 to assign expenses to all of the activities. So if you've seen my other videos, what I like to do is export this file into Excel, which I'll show you how to do that now. Um, we're just gonna export into Excel, choose expenses, export, and uh, I have this, ex this expenses template. So I'm gonna modify that. And you can just copy the selected options here. The main ones that I need are the activity ID, the expense item, and the budgeted cost. Those are the most important. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna, um, you can choose a destination where you wanna send it to. I'm gonna finish that. So now let's go ahead and open that file up. All right, so here is that activity that we assigned the expense to, and there's our $1 value. Um, so now what I need to do is I basically wanna copy over the activities that I'm gonna be assigning expenses to, and let's go ahead and copy those, and let's paste those into our Excel file right here. And I need to clean these activities up. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna take these IDs and I wanna copy them over here so that way we can import, uh, import the assignments back into P6 and it's gonna assign an expense to all of these activities all at once so that we don't have to manually go through like I showed you before and add expenses. So in order to clean those up, I'm just gonna insert a column here and I use this formula called trim and I'm just gonna trim that item and I'm just gonna double click this little box here and it's gonna auto fill down all of my values there. 
So let's go ahead and I'll copy these and I'll copy the values over here. And you can see I have like a building two, building three, building four, building five. These were just the WBS banners. So let's go ahead and delete those. So we're not importing those in. And the other row I'm going to delete is just this uh, row 1060 since it's already been assigned up here. I, I don't need to assign it again. So let's just ignore that. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cost because uh, it's going to ask what what expense item because you can have multiple expense items so I want all of them to just be called cost so I'm just going to copy that all the way down and then as far as the budgeted values and stuff actually I can just have a value of zero for all of those I really don't need a value uh, it, for, for all of these so let's go ahead and paste our values down and then I'm going to delete my task status Anything with an asterisk is actually not an importable field. So let's go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these values over here, because I don't need those when I run my import. And uh, last thing I'm gonna do, I know it's like a lot, but um, I wanna get rid of these, these error codes here. So let's go ahead and just convert those to a number and so now my file is ready to be imported. Um, so just make sure that you have all of your activity IDs cleaned up. You know, you've, you've copied down your expense item how you want it. You have added a value into your budgeted fields if that's something that you're importing back in. And I just make sure that there's no other information, you know, like that table that we had over here. I don't want to include that It'll cause an error message because when P6 goes to import it, it's gonna be looking at all the information. So just make sure that that is cleaned up. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and import that back in. So we need to close this file down first and then let's go ahead and we'll import that file back in, that changed file. So let's go ahead and we'll have to search for that file here. Go to our desktop and I got it under, where do I got that thing? Excel imports, here we go. So we'll choose expenses, next update existing project and then import it to and choose the schedule file that you're working off of, next and then we'll finish that. All right, so import was successful. So let's just test that by looking at our activities here and we can see down here we have the cost expense assigned to all of those activities the other way i can verify that is if i go over to my expenses and i can see all of these assignments have now been made all right so i think the next thing that i want to do is create some cost accounts to categorize, you know, to, to combine the earthwork into one cost account, the foundations into one cost account. And so that's gonna help us sum up, you know, um, similar scopes of work so we can see how much, you know, uh, one scope of work or one trade is gonna cost. Um, so like I said in the intro, that might help you out when you're doing the pay application and typical uh, cost accounts that people use are bid items. We're just going to call it, you know, earthwork foundation structure, um, and that's going to be our cost account. So you have to go to the enterprise tab and then cost accounts, and we can add our cost accounts here. So I'm going to call it zero one zero. What am I, what am I call? I'll call it three hundred, and then I'll call this one earthwork. I'll add another one and I'll do 400 for foundations. And then I'll do 500 for structure. I'll do 600 for our envelope. And I'll do 700 for roofing. And I'll do 800 for interior fit out. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that. And now I need to assign those cost accounts to so those, the similar activities. So what I'll do is go back to our expenses and let's go ahead and assign, um, let's see here. 
So there's no cost accounts that are currently shown, but what I can do is, let's see, I'm gonna apply a cost account to the earthwork. So if you go to the general tab and you go to cost account and you click those that three button there, so I'm gonna go earthwork for one, and then I'm gonna do one for envelope, and I'm just gonna do it for each one of these activities. There's envelope. And you can see right now that I'm, I'm sorted by activity name, so you can see they're all bunched up together. Um, so I can do structure, let's do that as well. Let's do roofing. And interior fit out. Interior fit out. All right, so now that we have at least one assigned into those buckets, what I can do is highlight the structure activities and if you ho hover to the left here, you can see my cursor changes. So once it changes, that means I can actually click, hold, and grab those activities, and I can put those all under the structure bucket. So now you can see that gets added there. For my roofing, I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, so there's roofing, interior fit out, and so it just makes it easy to assign the cost account to all of those activities. I just realized I didn't create a foundation one or assign it yet, so let's go ahead and do one of these for the foundations. And now I can take those activities and drag them into the foundations bucket. Let's do the envelope right there, and let's do the earthwork right up there. Awesome. So now what I want to do, and if you're not seeing it by, group by cost account, uh, what you can do is go up to your group and sort and they have a, a setting there by cost account. You could also do by WBS if you wanted to, um, you know, to make it easier. Just whatever makes it easier to, to help you categorize these uh, cost accounts. So we're going to go cost account. And then um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is start adding actual values to these activities. So I have a column here for budgeted cost. Again, I'm on the expense tab, make sure you're there. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna start adding these costs under the budgeted cost column. So I want my earthwork to be $20,000 per activity. So I'm just gonna add a budgeted cost directly here for $20,000. And then I'm gonna hold my shift key on my keyboard and then I'm gonna click the bottom activity and uh, I right click and say fill down. And you'll, you'll also see me use the control E um, shortcut and that's also filled out. And so that'll take that value and apply it to all of the activities below that. So my foundations, I wanna do 120,000. I'm gonna do the same thing, shift, and then I'm gonna do control E to fill down. My structure, I want that to be 200,000. Uh, envelope, I'm gonna make that 80,000. And I'll do 55,000 for the roofing. And then I'll do 300,000 for in, oops, 300,000 for the interior fit out. <clears throat> okay, so now we've applied all of our costs to the activity. So let's switch back to the activities page. And uh, you can see here, it applied those costs to all of my activities there. Um, so that's that $3.8 million that we were talking about before. Um, the next thing that I wanna show you is where do you find the distribution curve? So if you click here under activity usage profile, um, this is this automatically generated for me. Most likely what it's gonna show you though is maybe like a units and it's gonna look something like this and you're gonna wonder how do you actually show the cost uh, distribution. So what you'll have to do is you'll right click and then click on activity usage profile options and make sure you display costs and then you'll want to display the expenses because that's the type of uh, resource that we're using I guess you'd say. Um, and then if you want you can do, uh, I, I apply the budgeted and the actual costs. You could also apply cumulative curve curves if you wanted to, but let's just go ahead and apply the budgeted costs. And then I also have down here the planned value and the earned value costs. So let's go ahead and apply that. You can see here, 
I have the yellow bar is the budgeted amount. So it provides this cost curve for what's scheduled over the life of the project if all goes according to plan. There's no blue um, bar for the actual represented because we haven't actually progressed any activities yet. Um, and then I have a planned value cost which uh, starts at zero and then as the costs are scheduled to get incurred goes up to the 3.8 million dollar value and then you can see the earned value cost is currently zero and that's because we haven't actually progressed any activities and you can change the colors too i mean i often like to like to mess with the colors um you know depending on maybe your your company colors or whatever but uh, you can you can go ahead and change the colors and stuff like that so that is how you do the uh, resource usage profile. Um, the next thing that I would want to know how to do is progressing the schedule. Um, so say we, you know, we've copied this schedule over and now we're using it as update number one. So you would go ahead and do, do your normal updating process. You'd say, um, so say this activity got done um, September 1st and finished uh, September 15th. And maybe our foundations started a little early, say uh, those started on September 16th and they are 50% done. Well, you can see here that no um, actual costs have been applied to these activities, which it's something that I don't like about using expenses um, is there's not a way to tie the percent complete to the, the actual expense cost. Um, so you'll have to go and manually put in, uh, go to the expense tab here, add a column for the, uh, the expense percent complete. Make sure that that's on here. And what you'll want to do is just match whatever your activity percent complete is for that activity or, or however much that you want to specifically bill. So let's go ahead and add, an act, uh, add a percent complete here for activity percent complete. So I can see this is 100%, and if you're wanting to bill that amount 100%, you can just enter 100% and it's gonna make the actual cost equal to your budgeted cost. So it's gonna bill that activity out completely. Um, same thing here for 50%, uh, I'm just gonna add 50% there. There is a way to do it uh, if, you're, if you're dealing with like a lot of activities that have made progress. Um, I like to I like to do uh, to import the values from Excel into P6. Um, I will link to a video where I show you how to do that, but uh, it, it it's kind of a long tutorial as well, so I don't want to I don't want to include it in this one. But uh, but <clears throat> check out the video that's linked below, and uh, and you can see how to import the actual costs from Excel into P6. So. We've gone ahead and applied some actuals now. Let's go ahead and we'll move our data date to the following month and reschedule. And then if I go back to my distribution curve, you can see now that now September has some values, some actual values. So if I double click on the that specific month, you can see we have we had a budgeted cost of five uh, fifty six hundred dollars but an actual cost of $80,000. And so cumulatively, you know, we've only done one month, but, uh, but you can see the cumulative values there. And you can kind of start to see the, 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 the curves take shape. Maybe I'll change this uh, earn value curve to a, a yellow, just so you can maybe see it a little bit better. But you can see the earned value curve is above the planned value curve, and that's because Obviously, our actual cost this month were greater than our, our budgeted cost. Um, so that is how you would cost load uh, a schedule using expenses. If you have any any comments or questions and, uh, and or ideas for videos, please leave it in the comments down below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. All right. Appreciate it. Have a good one.